Welcome to SPC Insights with Dr. Bill, simplifying SPC and statistical analysis. This video takes a look at Pareto charts, how you create one, how you use one, how you can tunnel down to get more information about your process. Why don't we agree more? Now, what are the major reasons for rework? What are the major reasons for scrap? You know, which customer complains the most? What are the major reasons for the customer complaints? What are the issues we have with getting the books closed at the end of the month? Month Pareto charts help us reach agreement on the major problems using data. In this video, we're going to take a look at the 80-20 rule. We're going to take an overview of the Pareto chart. We'll talk about how you construct a Pareto chart. We'll talk about Pareto chart examples. For example, billionaires. We'll talk about how you tunnel down the other category, operational definitions, and then a summary. Well, Fader Pareto was an Italian economist, and he developed the Pareto chart or the Pareto principle, really discovered 80% of Italy's wealth was held by 20% of the people. This became known as the 80-20 rule or the Pareto principle, and it's true in a lot of things. For example, 20% of uh, the employees are responsible for 80% of the employee problems, 20% of the customers are responsible for 80% of the customer complaints. And a Pareto chart is going to help us separate those vital few from the trivial many. It's a special type of bar chart, like I said, that separates the vital few from the trivial many, as shown in the picture. The problems are listed on the x-axis, the frequency on the y-axis. The problems are listed in descending order of frequency. And then you can see the highest bars are what we call the vital few. That's where we should be spending our time. So let's take a look at an overview of a Pareto chart. Here's one that we did on injuries in a plant. You can see the top two injuries are hands and arms and feet and legs. And those are listed in descending order on the x-axis, the frequency on the y-axis. And they help reach consensus on what the major problem is. Definitely hands and arms are the number one reason. And the cumulative line says that account for 58% of the, of the injuries that we saw. Let's take another look at another example, picking errors in a warehouse. We have pickers who go out and pick line items for shipping sometimes are errors we know the reasons for errors so we have we're going to collect data on that overcount unit of measure undercount wrong item and not a um, similar part number and you can figure out then if you do a Pareto diagram which reason occurs most frequently it's real easy to see in this one over count is the largest reason and it accounts for 47 percent of the problems so you can see from the cumulative line Okay, and if you combine overcount and unit of measure, both of them together, they account for 67% of the total picking errors. But if we focus on overcount, we could eliminate and got rid of them, we could eliminate 47%, almost half the errors. So suppose we did that. What would you think would happen to the Pareto diagram? Well, because Pareto diagrams charts can be used to show improvements. So we will out work on errors due to overcount, and then we redraw the chart after we've made improvements. We reduce the number of overcount. Well, you can see the overcount has moved to the right. It's eight now compared to where it was 34. So the Pareto chart shows the gains made through process improvements. We use it in many situations. You can use it in production. You can use it in maintenance for downtime reasons. You can use it uh, in shipping errors and accounting. We're gonna look at what example of, of one with billing errors, safety, which we already talked about and showed. You can determine major reasons for waivers, for injuries, delayed shipments, and voice errors. And you do not have to use frequency all the time on the y-axis. You can also use other things such as cost, which would be a good one for if the injuries, instead of frequency, do the medical cost associated with the injuries. So how do you construct a Pareto diagram? This is going to be the, the billing errors. Determine the problems or causes to use. Number of billing errors are due to wrong PO number, addition, freight, cost, not on file, wrong quantity. Select the time period. We suppose a month. Total the frequency of each problem. Draw in the X and Y axis. Start with the most important problem first, which is not on file there, 24. Draw in the bars. Calculate the cumulative percentages. Plot the cumulative percentage line and title the graph and others. But you're going to use software and not do it manually anymore. Here's a simple example with the SPC Excel software. You simply enter your data into Excel, enter in the, the, the name of the chart, select OK, and you have your Pareto chart which shows not on file being the number one reason for, for uh, billing errors. So let's talk about the cumulative percentage line. The first column here is the reasons, second is the frequency, and the other is the cumulative percentage. There are a total of 62 errors that were, that were found. And not on file had 24 of those, so 24 divided by 62 is 
The cumulative means you add the next two together, so to add in addition, you have 24 plus 15 divided by 62, and that gives you 63%, and so on until you get down to 100%. So, tunneling down into the Pareto chart, you use the Pareto chart to tunnel down further into an issue. For example, you take the highest bar, it could have been hands and arms injuries and that one on, on injuries in a plant, and you ex create a new Pareto chart, expand it, just that bar to do a Pareto chart on reasons for hands and, and arms injuries. So that tunnels down. Many Pareto charts also contain another category. If the other category is very large, that's not good. Okay, you need to take a closer look at that. So you should always, even though you have another category, record the reasons for the other. Eventually you might need that to determine if additional reasons should be added to the chart. And finally, the operational definitions are very important. They're based, typically cradle charts are based on qualitative data, picking errors, shipping errors, on time, performance, etc. You know, what is on time? The date we asked for it. Okay, if we shipped early, is it still on time? If we agreed to a change in the, in the due date, is it still on time? So data collected with different definitions are going to be suspect. So it's critical you have good operational definitions so that everybody agrees on what it means to be on time, for example. So summary, we looked at the 80-20 rule. We did an overview of the Pareto chart, how to construct a Pareto chart. We looked at a number of examples, including billing errors. Talked about how to tunnel down, talked about the other category about operational definitions. So, for more SBC insights, click on the subscribe button, or you can also visit our SBC knowledge base. We have over 200 publications on SBC and statistical analysis topics, all free. You can make your own Prater diagram, buy the software or download the demo for free. So, simplified statistical charting and analysis, visit www.sbcforexcel.com. And thank you very much for watching the video.